Hello everyone, I am Inchira R, volunteer at Shivi Forensics and would like to welcome you all to my presentation on the topic DNA Profiling and DNA Typing. So without any further delay, let's get started with the presentation. First, let's try to understand what do we mean by the term DNA Profiling and DNA Typing. DNA Profiling, also known as DNA Fingerprinting, is a kind of laboratory technique which is used to analyze and identify the unique characteristics of an individual's DNA. This process also involves extracting DNA from a particular biological sample which may be blood, saliva, urine or semen and then analyzing specific regions of the DNA molecule. Let's try to understand what do you mean by the term DNA typing. DNA typing is a process used to identify an individual's DNA characteristics. It involves analyzing specific regions of the DNA molecule known as genetic markers and helps to determine an individual's genetic profile. DNA typing can be used for various purposes which includes forensic analysis, paternity testing and genetic research. So now let's move on to the next slide which deals with the schematic representation of DNA profiling. The steps that is present in DNA profiling. First step is DNA extraction. There is nothing but extraction of the DNA from a particular biological sample. Second, PCR with labeled primers. That is polymerase chain reaction with the labeled primers. Third, digestion with restriction enzymes. Fourth, electrophoresis separation. And the final step of DNA profiling is laser detection. Next, let's move on to the important topic of DNA profiling, which is the importance of DNA profiling and DNA typing. So let's understand what is the importance of DNA profiling and DNA typing in the field of forensic science and how has it helped the investigators in order to deal with particular criminal activities. First, it helps to identify the suspects and solve criminal activities, exonerate wrongful convictions, identify the human remains and the last one is to resolve paternity disputes. Now, the major topic of the DNA profiling is the process of DNA profiling. So, what are the procedures or the steps that is involved in DNA profiling and DNA typing? First is the DNA extraction. Second, the DNA amplification. Third, DNA analysis. Fourth, genetic marker analysis. And fifth is the comparison and interpretation. So, let's move in detail towards the particular steps. First is DNA extraction. The DNA is extracted from a biological sample, which may be blood, urine, saliva or semen. Second is the DNA amplification. So, the extracted DNA is amplified using a particular process, which is known as polymerase chain reaction, also known as PCR. Third is the DNA analysis, which is nothing but analyzing a particular DNA. The amplified DNA is analyzed using a particular technique, such as agarose gel electrophoresis or next generation sequencing which is NGS. Fourth step is the genetic marker analysis that is specific genetic markers are analyzed to determine an individual's genetic profile. And the final step of DNA profiling is comparison and interpretation. The resulting DNA profile is compared to the known DNA profiles or used to identify an individual's genetic characteristics. So, the next slide deals with the schematic representation of the above set, that is the procedure of the DNA profiling and typing. First is the collection and storage of the samples, extraction of the DNA, quantitation, nothing but the quantification of the DNA, amplification, separation and detection. Let's move on to the next important topic in DNA profiling, which is the application of DNA profiling and DNA typing. Where is the DNA profiling and DNA typing used in our daily life? So, it is a broad application of DNA profiling. First is forensic science. Second, paternity testing. Third, genetic research. And fourth is the personalized medicine. So, now let's go in detail. How? What are the applications or where are these used in forensic science? First, the DNA profiling is used in forensic science to identify individuals solve crimes and resolve paternity disputes. Second is the paternity testing. DNA profiling is used to determine paternity and resolve any kind of child custody disputes. Third, the genetic research. DNA profiling is used in genetic research in order to study the genetic basis of diseases and develop new treatments. Fourth, personalized medicine. 
DNA profiling is used in personalized medicine to tailor medical treatment to an individual's unique genetic profile. So let's move on to the most important topic of the presentation that is the techniques that are used in DNA profiling and DNA typing. So there are few techniques that are used and some of them are polymerase chain reaction, gel electrophoresis which is agarose gel electrophoresis, capillary electrophoresis and next generation sequencing that is NGS. So let's move in detail towards these techniques. First is the polymerase chain reaction. Polymerase chain reaction is nothing but a kind of laboratory technique that is used to amplify specific DNA sequences that is being extracted. Second is the gel electrophoresis, nothing but the agarose gel electrophoresis is also a kind of laboratory technique that is used to separate DNA fragments based upon their size. Third is the capillary electrophoresis. It is also a kind of laboratory technique used to separate DNA fragments based on their size as well as charge, whether it's positively charged or negatively charged. Fourth is the next generation sequencing, that is NGS, is also a kind of laboratory technique used to sequence the entire genomes or specific DNA. So, there are certain schematic representation of the above mentioned techniques, that is nothing but the next generation sequencing, which involves four steps, that is DNA extraction, library preparation, sequencing and analysis. The next is polymerase chain reaction. The polymerase chain reaction, it involves several steps that is denaturation, annealing and elongation. The next slide includes or explains regarding the capillary electrophoresis which involves both positive and negative charged. Next is the agarose gel electrophoresis. So, I hope you all have understood the particular topic and have gained information regarding that. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope your presentation, you found the presentation informative. Thank you everyone.